Welcome to the Good News Program. This program is brought to you by a group of businessmen from several different Christian denominations. We're not a church, we're very supportive of churches, but we're called the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship in Canada. And what we do is we get together once a month or for a banquet or breakfast or a noon luncheon, and we'll have one or two men share their testimony of what God's done in their life today, not just a few thousand years ago. And uh, then we go back to our own denominations and try to be a better member of that particular denomination. My guest today is Rory Allen. Rory uh, has an exciting testimony and I know that you'll be blessed by it. Rory, thanks so much for coming and sharing. Well, thanks for asking me, Steve. This is great. Yeah. So uh, I know today you have uh, done uh, an impersonator of uh, Elvis Presley for yeah. some time. Yeah. I'm in and my 20th year of doing in that. In your 20th year. A full-time show business. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. But where did life begin for you? Where were you born and what are some of the good things back there? I was born uh, in Saskatoon, actually. Our, our family lived in Kalonze when I was little. Mm -hmm. And then we moved to Rokenville. So a lot of my uh, younger years was spent in a small town. Uh, didn't have a lot, you know, just pretty, pretty humble. I was the youngest, so my, my siblings tell me I, I got spoiled a lot because I was the baby, but I, I have some, you know, I have some memories. I did, I did get the odd licking when I was a little guy too. <laughs> but uh, we, we uh, moved to Regina uh, when I uh, was going into grade two. And so I've been in Regina, uh, or uh, where I am right now, uh, since, since then actually. So mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. call it my home. So what was life like as a youngster? Uh, well, it's not, it's, it's, well, back, uh, back when we were kids, uh, and I can say, you can say uh, also with your background, um, our moms would say, go out and play and come back when you're hungry. Because uh, we had a TV, but there was one channel, and you couldn't get anything on it. There's no computers, there's no VCRs, no cell phones. Uh, so you pretty much went out, found your friends, and made a fort. We'd climb around the lumber yards, and people would chase us off, and you know, it, it, we'd be all over the town. Yeah, I had a really great childhood, actually. And then uh, I went to a public school in the city uh, after grade three, and uh, ended up going to high school here too, and, mm -hmm. and meeting my, my girlfriend, uh, soon to be wife. Yes, yeah, yeah. good, good. So uh, Regina has basically been your home for most of your life. Yeah, so. and I wouldn't say I grew up in a church family, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, a believing family like we, we know it today. Uh, I grew up where people said, hey, if, if you're a nice person and if you throw a quarter in when the, you know, when, <laughs> you know, when the, you know, a plate goes by, if you throw a quarter in and you, you come to the church picnic, you're going to heaven, yeah. basically, is what the, the psyche for most people back then was. Yes. And yeah. uh, if you go to that church, you can't get saved. And if you go to that church, you can't get saved. Yeah. Well, God doesn't care what church you go to because he can, he can, he can get you wherever you are. Yes. If you ask him, he's there for you. So, yes. Uh, it's, <clears throat> uh, Jesus is wonderful that way. So, um, yeah, we weren't, I wasn't brought up a, a Christian. My dad was the minister at a, uh, a church in... Uh, Rokenville for a year and we lived next door to the church but I don't think I learned much because I you go to the co-op uh, the co-op store which was next to our house on Saturdays and I'd walk down the aisles and oh gee a box of Smarties fell in my pants for some reason <laughs> and so I'd go back and what I do is I go into the church I would go under the pulpit because mm -hmm. I know nobody would look there mm -hmm. and I'd eat my Smarties that I just <laughs> stolen from the co-op now bearing in mind I was six I hope the statute of limitations is past <laughs> that. But uh, so I was a normal kid doing silly things, and uh, I continued to do silly things even into uh, high school. Uh, you know, because there's always dancing and partying, and you know, once you hit about grade grade ten, I would say, it's it's girls, cars, and and uh, having a drink. Mm -hmm. And I was I was there, but I wasn't like a lot of my friends that tried the hard drugs and everything else. I, I never got into the drugs. I, I, I tended to, you know, like to have a beer and things like that. But uh, it, uh, it all changed when I was 19. And uh, what happened when you were 19? Well, I met a girl. Uh, <laughs> I met a girl who was really, really good looking. 
and uh, fell in love. We got put together as dance partners uh, at a community theater production of Pirates of Penzance. Now, she had seen me in Hello, Dolly! before. I was Rudolph the Headwaiter, the guy that walks around with a German accent, and he does... Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know. The lightning service tonight shall be more lightning than ever. Yeah. <laughs> Schnell! And I had tucks and tails with it. I, I felt pretty cool, like, I think maybe what I want to do is be an actor. Uh, this is pretty cool, but she, uh, <clears throat> we, we got to, she was at that Hello, Dolly! to see me, and I didn't know that she wanted to meet me. So... The next play I did with Pirates of Penn Dance, and we got together as dance partners. The choreographer put us together as dance partners for the, for the show. So uh, the rest is history. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we, we had the normal dating relationship. We'd go to the beach and have fun. And you know, we all after rehearsals, we'd get together and everybody would have drinks or go dancing. And uh, something happened in uh, the beginning of 1980. Lori changed. And she, uh, she told me about uh, accepting Jesus as her personal Lord and Savior and, and becoming a Christian. I'm, I'm going, oh, that's cool. That's no problem with me. You can do whatever you want because I love you and you look really good. Yeah. So, yeah. And, but it kept, she kept reading and reading and reading more. And she'd always be pulling out the Bible and going, can't we just watch the game? Can we, you know? <laughs> so it was apparent that I wasn't going to get out of this. So I'd started to listen to Lori and see what was going on, because she did seem uh, changed for the better. Uh, her, she was happy, she was smiling, she was uh, uh, looking forward to life. And uh, I kept asking questions about uh, Jesus and, and what happened, and how can you have a person come into you and then change like this? That's, that's not possible. This spiritual stuff is kind of a little weird. Um, but after a few months of her explaining it to me, and uh, she, she had been going to a church where the assistant pastor decides to come and visit, come on visitation when I'm over at her place. So I, I'd be at Lori's, we'd be uh, sitting watching a hockey game, having a beer, and uh, there'd be a knock on the door and be the assistant pastor. Oh, just thought I'd come and watch some, uh, some of the game with you. And my beer would go down beside <laughs> Oh, good to see you, Chuck. How are you? <laughs> And we had all these conversations about how about the dinosaurs? I had these, uh, how were the dinosaurs here if, if the earth isn't supposed to be that old and things like that. And, uh, but it kept tugging on me in the, in the little scriptures that we're in. Uh, you must be born again. You know, uh, mm -hmm. And uh, Jesus is coming back. And it seemed, it seemed so far away for me to, to actually talk like that because I was a good guy. I had lots of friends, you know. I, I, I never m meant to hurt anybody. I'd always break up fights if I could, or I'd always, you know, oh, come on, you guys don't want to do that. Or, uh, it, for instance, uh, my friend and I, and this is before we were saved, we, if we were at a party and there was a girl that had too many things to drink, and there was a guy sitting beside her trying to get her out, we'd go over there and say, she's not going anywhere with you, pal. So we'd make sure she got, and that was one of the things that, we took a little bit of pride in us helping some people out that way. But still, that's not going to get you to heaven. You, you, can, uh, you can give all your food away to the poor. You can give uh, all your possessions away. You can be at every committee meeting. You can, you can volunteer in everything possibly you can. Then you can go home, do all the housework for your family. You can take your kids out to the park, be the best father in the world. But if you, if you miss one small thing, if you can't confess that you were born a sinner and you're headed for hell and you need a savior and that savior is Jesus Christ, that counts for nothing. But once you do that, then the good things that you did before you were a Christian, before Jesus came into your life, they count for something now. They, they, they count uh, in people's hearts. Uh, I don't, when, when you got saved, Steve, Mm -hmm. uh, were you saved very early, early in life? or? Well, I uh, believed in Jesus, but I had never put him in charge of my life until yeah. later on, substantially later on. Oh. And uh, that's what made the difference in my life. Uh, you know, there's, I always say there's a lot of people that believe in, in Jesus, but they've never put him in charge. They haven't had that born again experience. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. when I, I got saved at 19, so, um, and... Uh, so you, you think you're just going down the, the right road anyway. Mm -hmm. 
But I got saved on the loading dock at, uh, at Sears. I was loading trucks. Of I think everybody's places. loaded trucks at Sears or some company before. <laughs> and uh, I'd been talking with Lori and talking with her pastor. And, and, I've, and I had this, these questions and these feelings building up in me like, there's something I need to do. I have unfinished business here. This is a great life, but there's, there's like, I didn't know it was a God-shaped void. There's a void in all of us yes. that's shaped specifically for Jesus to fit. And uh, if that's, you wander aimlessly through life, thinking you're doing a good job, but at the end of your life, you're going to go, I haven't done anything with my life. You know, you yeah. can win awards and everything else, but if, uh, if you die without Jesus and go to hell, all your awards mean nothing. That's right. They mean nothing. That's right. Uh, but I remember, Stephen, you'll remember this too. I, I used to read the Bible before I was a Christian. I would look at it and go, and there'd be King James words, and I'm going like, who can read this? I don't even understand this stuff. But as soon as I got saved, as soon as I asked Jesus into my heart mm -hmm. on that uh, loading dock, in the trailer where we put the rugs, boom, I walked out, a new guy was smiling. I was like, this is great. It was like the weight got lifted off of my chest. I'm not under condemnation anymore. Uh, I didn't get that that voice inside of me going, you know, you really are a terrible person. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. It, it went away. It went away. And as soon as I started to read the Bible again, I understood it. It was like jumping off the page. It's because God, uh, in his wisdom, interprets what's coming off the page to you. Now, I know a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, well, if I'm talking like I normally talk to people, there's a lot of freak shows out there that'll take this piece of uh, scripture, three pages, it'll take that, that, mm -hmm. then they'll start a religion on it. Yeah. You read the whole thing in context, it makes pretty much sense. And, yes, it does. And, and after you've asked Jesus into your heart to take over because you're never going to do this on yourself, by yourself, I can't believe people that are married that don't have Jesus as a common link because uh, uh, I don't know how you live that close to somebody your entire life and not get a divorce if you're not saved. Yeah. There are so many pressures back and forth. It's, um, there, were, there were times, even in our marriage, where it was rough. I couldn't find a job, and Lori was going out working. Well, if there's any guys in there, if you can't find a job in, during the 80s because you're laid off and there's no work to be had and you're putting out 100 resumes and you're sitting at home, you know, I'll just sit here and watch the RCA TV. Mm -hmm. It's about this big, and I had to turn, turn the thing on the remote to get it to work. <laughs> and my wife is going off to work. It was... That's it, no fun. It was devastating. I just felt like uh, I was starting to feel really bad about that, and I kind of went, well, you know what? Jesus got something better. And I went through a few more jobs, and, and uh, I did a talent show uh, at a new church we went to. And it was a spiritful church. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were always hearing about these people talking in tongues and prophesying. And, and uh, we, uh, we met a friend. He came over, and he prayed with us. And, and uh, we received uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And, and, uh, what is that, it? the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Well, in, uh, in Acts, it's, it, it's uh, described as tongues of fire mm -hmm. coming down on you. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's good symbolism because uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit actually gives, it's like a turbocharger for your mm -hmm, faith. Mm -hmm. um, and it's normally used for you in the quietness of your own home, uh, speaking in tongues because there's, you can pray to God and you don't have anybody around you. You know, in a lot of Pentecostal churches, and we go to one where, you know, there's some rock and services and stuff. Mm -hmm. But if you want to get in touch with God, you can, you can pray in tongues, and people can be dancing around you. But you know it's just you and God. It's a pipeline. So you're saying when you pray in tongues, you're actually speaking to God. You're yes. praying to God. And yeah, that's and, good. And uh, he speaks back. He hasn't sp spoken to me audibly yet. <laughs> that um, would be really cool. But I think when he does that, he only spoke audibly to, uh, to Moses, I believe. And uh, he might have. I think he might have spoke to Enoch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. And uh, they're not here anymore, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I just, uh, it's been great. We have four kids. I, I, I did a uh, talent show at our church 
and uh, I did an Elvis song. And that's how this came to be. Yeah, yeah. This <laughs> and it uh, just kind of blew up. The guy asked me, I was out of work, and he said, do you do this for a living? And I laughed at him, and he said, well, you're better at the guy at the dinner theater that I saw. Maybe you should think about it. Yeah. And so I started doing a few birthday parties, and now it's, it's turned into a ministry because so many people love Elvis's music and what he did, and I have people waiting just to ask me about what happened to their family members. I go to... Um, it's been 20 years of doing shows at the casino now, this year, mm -hmm. and uh, our, we have a brilliant band and stuff, but we're allowed to go into hospitals. We do it every year. Our most important one is uh, palliative care, where people are dying and the families are around there. We do a concert in palliative care, and then for the people that are too sick, they ask us to come into the bed, around the bed, and pray with the people around the bed, Good. and then we sing. And no one, no one in palliative care Whatever their background is, when I ask them, can we pray for you, all of them, 100% go, yes. Yeah, that's so amazing. If, if I did, if I started this whole Elvis show thing that I'm, I've been doing for the last 20 years, was just because one person got saved mm -hmm. around a bed mm -hmm. at palliative care, it, it's worth the whole thing. It's worth the it's whole worth, thing. It's worth everything. Uh, sellouts and the symphony and get all these people in Jordan Airs the Imperials mm -hmm. doing shows and all this stuff mm -hmm. it's all candy yeah yeah I think God puts us in a position uh, like this to have people come to you to really hear what your where your heart is mm -hmm. and my heart is is uh, I don't want to see anyone perish mm -hmm. and fall short right, um, right. But you can't just get right in people's faces. No, no. It doesn't work anymore. Uh, we, traveling salesmen don't come by with brushes at your house anymore normally. So you have to give them something, uh, something a little different, something a little interesting that they want to come and just ask you. Uh, and you'll know them by their fruits, not by what they tell you their fruits are. That's right. That's right. You know, so if a guy says, hi, I'm a Christian, Steve. <laughs> I'd uh, like to do business with you. Yeah. <laughs> Back away, <laughs> back away. If a guy has to tell you he's a Christian, yeah, chances yeah. are he's probably reading the wrong books. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I noticed, uh, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, after you got the baptism of the Holy Spirit, did you become more bold in sharing your faith and stuff yeah. like that? Yeah, I have no fear. Yeah. I have no fear. It give you, it give you uh, power yeah. is, is what it says. Oh, yeah. You will endued with power. And the, the first disciples were certainly that. And from what you just said, I mean, before you, you, first of all, you came into a salvation experience, uh, and that took a load off your uh, off your back, and then the baptism of the Holy yep. Spirit, yep. and that endued you with power. You're praying directly to the Lord and ministering to people in hospitals, praying with them. Yeah. That's not just normal. That's that's great. I pray with people at the casino. Great. There'll be a hundred people lined up for my autographs. One lady will stop. Yeah. And I'm going to sign something, and she starts to cry. Yeah. And tells me her life story. Yeah. At the casino. Well, I'm not going to tell everybody else to leave, but then I'll at the end maybe you could write your number down and mm -hmm. we'll pray after. And that happens all the time. Uh, there was one lady in Saskatoon. This is the power of God for you. She has uh, uh, the shaking uncontrollably, uh, cerebral palsy. Uh, she was a nurse. I was doing a Christmas show. And uh, they said, please come and sing, come and sing for her. And, and I said, can, can she come up to the stage? So they helped her out, and she was shaking very badly. I took her hand, and as soon as I took her hand and started to sing, she went totally calm. Every nerve she didn't, sh for the whole song, I sang Blue Christmas to her, looked into mm -hmm. her eyes, mm -hmm. not one tremor. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I took my hand away, she started shaking again, and they took her back. So I know that there's a, there's a reason yeah. Uh, there, there's, there's a reason for all of us to be here. Yes. I, I know uh, it's mine and Lori and I look at what we do right now as a, just an extension of our ministry because people want to know what we know. Uh, yes. I, I get asked in all these gatherings, Rory, you're, you're the Christian guy. You pray. <laughs> <laughs> or ask the blessing. You go to the family things and I'm the token Christian guy in the family now. Yeah. Get Rory to pray. Yeah. He's the Christian guy. He's religious. <laughs> well, and there's the other thing. If you folks are watching, uh, religion's got nothing to do with Christianity. That's right. Religion is the thing that screws up Christianity. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so 
uh, you can be religious about having your coffee in the morning. Yeah. So it's just kind of a, it's a bad term to just blanket. Yeah, what, what you're saying, it's not about religion, rules and regulations where we make ourselves good enough by no. doing all these things. It's about that personal relationship Absolutely. with Jesus Christ. It is the only, only faith on planet Earth where the Savior has risen from the dead. Uh, our book is only 2,000 years old. Yeah. Uh, it is a New Testament. We don't have to go by the Old, old Testament feudal law, go into a town and kill every, everybody. Because yeah. Jesus, he, he just made that go away when he yeah. came. He gave us a new commandment. Go and it's, it's so wonderful. Yeah. And I'm not going to say you're not going to have any problems once you receive Christ. Because they still come. But now you've got somebody to help out with it. I, I can't believe people going through this life with the internet and, uh, and there's so much stuff inundating you with everything. From every direction. Yeah, if you don't, if you don't have an anchor, you're going to get blown around the world. And that's what people are, are doing right now. That mm -hmm. anchor's not in the water, so you're getting blown uh, by every boat and wind of doctrine comes by. Mm -hmm. Oh, this looks good. Oh, secular humanism. Oh, maybe, oh, I get to smoke a hookah pipe with this one. Mm -hmm. Oh, I get to do this. I get to do that. I get to do this. Yeah. Don't join anything because you get to do stuff. That's right. Become That's a right. Christian so you can help people. That's right. And, and through that, Jesus will help you and he, he'll just keep, he'll keep cleansing you if you ask. You're going to make mistakes big time. I, I, I probably made three mistakes before I got here today. <laughs> Times it, ten. So, you know, because this mind is constantly going and this is what you have to keep you have to keep on guard your mind. That's right. Because there's these there's bad thoughts inundating you all the time because the enemy, he's lurking around here like a hungry lion. Yes, yes he is. It's this, it's yes. this mind you got to keep uh, the you stuff between keep, your ears. Oh and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Jesus will take care of this. That's right. He's in charge of your heart. You got to be in charge of your head. Yeah, yeah. Roy, there's people that are watching this program they don't have that relationship with Jesus. They've never put him in charge. They're, they've never had their spirits born again. Yeah. And uh, they would like to do that. Would you help them do that? Just look at this camera right Absolutely. behind me. Absolutely. Now, I know there's people out there that uh, they're the type of personality where they hate to lose control. Well, if you're going to lose control to anything, it's just going to be control of your heart and your soul and where you're going to go when you die. And that's Jesus. Jesus came and died for you. He hung on a cross for you. He's the only guy that ever did that for anyone. Um, I'm almost starting to tear up because uh, don't even focus on anything else. There is one person that hung on a cross for you, a, a brutal beating. And after three days, guess what? He got out of the grave. And he ascended to heaven and he's coming back for us. And you know what? I was wondering how every eye will see him and back in the day, I know how it's going to be now, I think, and this is just my opinion, everyone has internet, everyone has a phone. So that is how God's going to turn it around on everybody because they're going to see Jesus coming back in the clouds. And uh, I hope it's, it's soon because I'd love to, I, I'm looking forward to seeing him. But if you've had problems in your life, if you're just floating around and uh, aimlessly, it's like your rudder's off your boat, you're a good person, you never hurt anybody, but there's something empty. I just want you to say one simple prayer, and it's, Father, thank you so much for making me, first of all. But God, I'm incomplete. I'm a sinner. God, I've, I've, uh, I've sinned against you and, and my family and probably everyone else, but that's okay. God, I just want you to come into my heart right now I want you to save me. God, make me a new creature. And God, I, I just plan to, uh, I plan to accept that and, wor and, and work to be a, a, a better person for you. But if you, if you say that simple prayer, first you're a sinner, Jesus, I acknowledge you. I, you died for me. Come into my heart right now and make me a new creature. And if you prayed that prayer, actually, right now, you are a new creature. So you've got to get into a Bible-believing church. And uh, I just say, go, go to a church where you feel comfortable, where, where you know people want to be there, they want to give you a hug. And uh, 
It, you have to make that choice. God will lead you to the people. But just uh, get into the Word, find a Bible. Uh, you don't have to go King James if you can't read the haths and the thous and the these. You can go to the store and people can let you know what kind of Bible you, you should get if you're just starting to begin reading the Bible. But uh, do that right away. And there's, a, there's a lot of people around the city that will help. Thank you, Rory. Thanks, Steve. And for those of you that made that decision, your spirit has been born again. Mm. And you will find that he works from the inside out. And what Rory said is true, that uh, he is with you and he will never leave you, never forsake you. And uh, so you can talk to him as you're talking to me or Rory's talking. He hears you. And if you have a need, if you have a problem, talk to him. Cry out and say, I need help. And he'll do that. So thank you for watching your program today. And Rory, thank you so much for sharing. It's been, been good having you. You bet, Steve. It was a blessing. And, yeah. And uh, we know that good things are happening. And, you betcha. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Get ready. He's coming soon. Yes.